All right, welcome everybody to loop day. So last time in the end of class, we sort of conceptually went over loops. Um, loops mean doing something over and over again. And uh, there's kind of two kinds of loops. One, when you know how many times loops can run, 50 times, 100 times, 1,000 times. And then there's another when you don't know when it's going to end. You know, keep going until the user hits quit. Okay, so for the first one, we do for loops. For the second one, we do while loops. Here is the, there's also do while loops. I also don't use them or teach them. It's kind of like switch statements. I know there's switch statements in Zybooks. Um, and I don't know, hopefully using them will convince you why they're kind of terrible. Uh, can you say something in Japanese? Haha. Uh, um, watashi wa sumo desu. Uh, now I had my, uh, I'm studying for the N5, um, JLPT test right now. So, uh, it's kind of rough cause I'm not in Japanese right now. So I have a tutor that I meet with two days a week and she puts up readings and I have to decipher them and answer questions about them. Who sold this? You're lying. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Honto. <laughs> no, my Japanese is really bad. Uh, it's uh, the way it sounds right now. I'm not. I'm not even confident I would do very well in the N5, especially my listening. My listening's really bad. Reading's okay. Oh, it's a she. Haha, -ha, my guy. Be getting them Japanese ladies. <laughs> um, I don't know what that means, but I'm sure it's complimentary and flattering. So, uh, let's talk about for loops. So, how do you do a for loop? A for loop. Uh, if you look at the uh, loop section on Zybooks, they'll, they'll say there's more ways of doing for loops than this. However, this syntax right here is the format I want you to follow 95% of the time. Okay, I'm going to read it to you and I'll type it up on the server in a second. For, open parentheses, int i equals zero, semicolon. Everybody forgets the semicolon at first. i is less than blah. Whatever blah is, whatever number that is, that thing highlighted in red right there, that is the number that's going to change. And the number that you put in there is the number of times the loop is going to run. If you put in a negative number, it won't run at all. Okay? Semicolon. I plus plus. If you write your for loop like this, you will know exactly how many times your loop is going to run. It will run 100 times. Uh, if you look at other people who talk about for loops online, sometimes they'll start the for loop at one, and then you have to start counting on your fingers and toes. How many times is this loop going to run? For anti equals one, i is less than five, i plus plus. Like you're like, okay, the first time through the loop it's one, the second time. And you, you, you sit there, you start hashing it out. No, don't worry about any of that stuff. Forget about all that. Forget about all that. All that different variance and sometimes less than or equal to, and mm -mm, nope. Don't do that. This is the pattern you want to follow. And there's actually a deep reason for this that will become more clear in 41. Uh, it's called the half open code pattern where it's where something starts at zero and goes to less than the number you're trying to hit. And all of the C++ standard library is structured around the half open code pattern. So if you write for loops like this, it'll match the standard library and the way they do it exactly and avoid bugs that way. So don't write for loops any other way uh, with some very few exceptions. What's plus plus for? It means increment i by one. So uh, the way this works is the, for, the first time through the loop, there's going to be a variable called i that's going to be zero. And the next time through the loop, i will be one. And the next time through the loop, i will be two. And it'll keep doing that uh, from zero to 99. When i hits 100, it doesn't run the code and it bails out. Okay. So again, the syntax is four, open parentheses, anti equals zero, semicolon, i is less than 100 or whatever number you want to run, semicolon, I++, plus plus, close parentheses, and then you're going to have a code block. And it will run whatever's in that code block 100 times. It could be one line of code. If it's one line of code, you can emit the uh, curly braces as normal. If it's five lines of code, it'll run those five lines of code 100 times. Okay? And this is a pattern that you need to just engrave into your brain. Okay, If you've never done programming before, this will feel unnatural and exotic, and that's okay. Because, like I said, you don't have actually that much stuff to memorize in this class. This is one of them, though. 
when I do this in person, I have everybody chanting after me, semicolon. Like Ricola. Hash browns covered in smothered. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Um, okay. So, let's do it. For int i equals zero, i is less than 100, i plus plus. See out. Hello, world. And I'll change this down to a 10 just so you it doesn't scroll off the top of the screen. This is your basic for loop. Anything that's between the curly braces is gonna be run 10 times, okay? So if we compile this and run it, we get 10 hello worlds. If I change this 10 to a 20, what do you think, how many times do you think this is gonna print hello world now? Some people are still typing. 10 plus 10. <laughs> All right. Let's make it a little more tricky for you. How many times is it going to print hello world now? Hmm. Hmm. Can we add a time delay between the prints? I can show you how to do that if you want. Does I need to be defined in the for statement, or can you have a variable for a previously defined integer? Uh, good question, Niles. If you look at C programmers, uh, it is traditional in C, like really traditional, like we're talking old school, uh, to do this. <clears throat> That's actually how people used to write for loops in C. Don't do that though, because that's going to leak. It's going to leak I down here. Okay. So I will exist after the for loop. When you declare it inside of here, uh, I does not exist. If I try C adding I, who's this I fellow? Never heard of him. Never met this man before in my life. Okay. So when you do it this way, the I is limited just to that scope. So you don't randomly have an I leaked out of the leaked out of the for loop, which you would if you did it. If you did it like that, that would leak. Oops, that would leak the um, the value of I. But if you, if you talk to C people, they like writing for loops that way for some reason. But if you wanted to exist after this scope, sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, int i. And if we were to uh, see out the value of i here, uh, it'll be 40. <clears throat> yeah, you can do that. If you want to know how many times the loop ran, sure. You can do that. So square root of 1600. Nice. Uh, is the include public read necessary? No, no, no. You don't need any of that. This is core language. This is core C++. That's... Even if you included nothing, um, the for loop would still work. You see how it's yellow? <clears throat> see out isn't even yellow. See out's not part of the core language. It's part of the standard library, which is found here in IO stream. <clears throat> but that's why... C out is not highlighted. Int is. Int's part of the core language. It's a type, a built-in type to the language. It's a primitive type. It's another way of saying that kind of. Uh, and then for is a reserved keyword in the language. You cannot create a variable called for, for example. Uh, the language will be mad at you if you do that. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So yeah, this will do hello world 80 times. Uh, if you want to add in a uh, a delay, I think that'll work. Um, so u sleep is. Uh, do you guys know what the u prefix probably means in the world of scientific notation? 
Has anyone seen the U used to represent some Greek letter? Micro. That's right. So this is uh, sleep for a number of microseconds, which is a millionth of a second. So a microsecond is a millionth of a second. So how many seconds is this going to sleep for? How many seconds is 500 millionths, 500,000 millionths of a second? 0.5, one half, yeah. All right, so compile it, run it. There you go. Doesn't just fly off the edge of the world now. Yep. And this is what I do in your uh, input tester. I add a slight delay so that it, it seems more, it adds tension to the, to the grading. more like maybe a fifth of a second, something like that. See, it feels like it's really working to grade your, your assignment that way. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I actually added it in to make it a little more dramatic. Uh, it says usleep wasn't declared. Yeah, usleep is part of the Unix standard library. So you have to hashtag include unistd.h and then that gives you access to usleep, which is another name for what students do in my class when I'm not entertaining. Is there a way to add sleep between each character? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but now we're going to have to learn how to loop over a string. Hmm, that's exciting. Let's do it. Okay. So, string s equals hello world. And if you guys have any other strings you'd like for me to echo to the screen, let me know. The more memeier, the better. Get Speak now or forever hold your pieces. Something like that. We want a shrubbery. That's a good one. Omae wa moshinderu. That's another good one. Cool. Um, no. Dora the Explorer. Explorer Dora came up first. So uh, we'll do that one. Um... Is it Yo Soy Dora? I actually, my mom taught Spanish at the college level and I never took it, so I actually don't know. Is this correct? Yo Soy Dora? Or is it just Soy Dora? It's the same thing. Just Soy? All right. Formally correct. Same. Mi Yeah. Mi Sorry. 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 Don't come after me. <laughs> Something like that? I don't know. Yeah, uh, it, my mom always wanted me to take Spanish so she could like help me with the homework and stuff like that. So I was like, nah, I'm gonna take French. <laughs> Can you say cutie pie in Japanese? No. no, probably just like cutie or. I think it's cutie. I think it's literally just the same. One of the really mind blowing things about Japanese is just how much of your English translates over into uh, into Japanese. Like professor in Japanese is sensei. We all know that, but you can also just say. Professor. Golf is gofu. Biking is a motorcycle is baiku. Like a present is presentu. Like there's so many cognates, it's it's really mind blowing. Okay. I had Spanish for two years, I had the worst teacher, so I learned nothing. Yeah, okay. So let's uh, let's print this out one letter at a time. So uh, this is actually gonna be pretty good for you. Uh, if you're gonna have a loop inside of a loop, you can't use I again. So we're gonna say and I and not I, int j equals zero. J is less than how many letters are in hola mi amo Dora? Exclamation mark. How many characters are we going to print to the screen? Do you want to count or do you want to just uh, use s dot size? S dot size tells you the number of characters in the string. Would you rather count by hand or would you rather use that? You, you guys let me know. String function. S dot length is is the same thing as S dot size. It's one more letter though. Okay. Um, 
and uh, j equals zero, j is less than size, j plus plus. So we're gonna do another for loop. And so we wanna print out each letter of that. So we're gonna print out s dot at. Do you guys remember that function? s dot at um, gives you a individual letter from a string. So we're gonna do s dot at j. And that is gonna, um, that's, well, we have, we have to see that out, right? S dot at J. And so that's gonna print H the first time through the loop, O the second time through the loop, L the third time through the loop. How to check your mail, informdelivery.usps.com. I, I think he's talking about Alpine, right? Or P, hit P. And so if we uh, uh, just move the U sleep up into here, then it's gonna pop, uh, that's gonna be a little excessive. Let's do a 10th of a second. So, uh, which is 0.1 seconds. So it's gonna pause 0.1 seconds per um, letter. Okay, and we're gonna do this 10 times. So this will make it look like a typewriter or whatever is, uh, yeah, that's fine. Aha, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you wanna simulate Neo, wake up, or whatever it is. What was the, what was the line in the Matrix? It's like the white rabbit or something. Follow the white rabbit. What did it say? Hmm. I'd have to watch the Matrix again. Wake up, Neo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You can simulate somebody typing, or something like that. Something's afoot at the circle K. <laughs> Why s dot at j? Yeah, uh, the um, what what this is saying here is uh, starting at letter zero in the string, going to the end of the string, one letter at a time, print that letter. The, the better question is what the hell that's doing. Um, but this, the s dot at, like I talked about on Monday and Wednesday, is the function you use to um, get an individual character out of the string. And so the first time through the loop, it's going to get character 0, w. Next time through the loop, it's going to get character 1, a, so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, pretty cool. Um, if you just want to see what i is, So the first time through the loop, it's gonna print the value of i. Next time through the loop, it's gonna print the value of i. Next time through the loop, it's gonna print the value of i. So how many times is it gonna print the value of i? Five times, okay. The first time through the loop, i is gonna be zero. The next time through the loop, i is gonna be one. Next time through the loop, i is gonna be two, zero, one, two, three, four. Four is the last time through. The reason for that is that when i becomes five, it stops the loop. So when it gets to the top of the loop again and i is five, it, that's what terminates the loop. So what this means, to explain what's going on here, the first part here creates a loop counter and we always use i unless i has already been taken, in which case we use j, in which case, unless j has been taken, in which case we use k. <laughs> Uh, the worst nested for loop I've seen was uh, 40 loops inside of each other. So they started using II, IJ, IK, IL. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I'll explain ci.flush in a little bit. So what's going on here when we run it is it's going to print the values from 0 to 4. So the loop runs five times. Do you see that? When we, when we use this code pattern, when we use this pattern here, I starts at zero and goes up to four. Zero, one, two, three, four. Five times total. Okay. It's called the half open code pattern. And this pops up everywhere in computer science. All sane modern languages use 
start counting from zero. That's why input input file zero, right? It goes from zero to 19. That's why there's 20 test cases. It goes from zero to 19. So um, meanwhile, R, meanwhile, Lua, meanwhile, for, Fortran. Yeah, but we're talking about good programming, which is not kidding. R is fine, R is fine. Uh, what was it for? Uh, the terrible nested loops? Um, no, so the, the scout, so the way that scout works is that it won't actually print anything to the screen. Watch this, you sleep for a second. And uh, remember these apostrophes you put in here, don't do anything. They're just to make the, um, otherwise you have to sit there and squint at it like, is that a million or a hundred thousand or 10 million, you know? So I, I like putting in uh, apostrophes in there just so I can group, you know, the digits. So watch what happens. I'm, I'm printing the numbers from zero to four again, but nothing appears until a second later. You see that? If I make it uh, five seconds, Nothing appears until the program ends. The reason for that is because words do not appear on your screen until you hit a new line. So if you do a new line, it'll appear immediately. Regard, da da, they appear immediately. If you do a new line character or new line cinema, then they will also appear immediately. If, however, you do not have a new line, they will stay in the output buffer until the program ends essentially. So um, when you do this, they don't appear on the screen. That's why I was doing a scout flush. See that? So uh, I did that, then I did a scout flush, and that makes sure that everything gets put on the screen immediately. So it's going to go zero, one, two, three, four, wait for five seconds, and then quit. Okay. Uh, if you use while loops, you can make it count infinitely. Sure, but then you got an infinite loop, which brings us to a, a, a thing. Like, let's say that I, I I screwed up and had this wait for 500 seconds, right? Run it. Here we go. Send it off. All right. So I could sit here and wait for 500 seconds for it to finish. That seems kind of boring to me. So if you want to quit a program that's running like this, it's Control C. Uh, Control C will kill it. Easy. If you want to background it, Control Z. We'll background it, or we remember how Control Z and Vim backgrounds it. Um, it's not technically running right now; it's actually suspended. So if I wanted to, though, I can type BG, and this thing's actually going to run in the background. So if you have a big, so you can see right there, it's it's actually running right now in the background. So if you want to have like some big job you want to run, then you typically will run it backgrounded like that. And if you want to, ever wanted to bring it back into the foreground, FG. Did it finish? Maybe I can after I tap it. There we go. Uh, and then I can control C to quit it. Um, you can also run a program backgrounded like that. By using the ampersand, you can run a program in the background. Okay. So that's that's useful if you're gonna be doing long, uh, long term, you know, runs and things like that. Okay, so yeah, if you if you ever fall into an infinite loop, control C is your friend. Control C cancels. Okay, so, so this for loop is going to run five times. What if we have nothing in there? What if we have this? It's a little more challenging for you. How many times is this code going to print hello world? Can you show us an infinite loop gone rogue? Sure. But let's, let's do this first. We, we haven't gone to while loops yet. So how many times is this code going to run hello world? How many times is it going to print hello world? What do you think? One time, zero time, two different answers here. How many times is this code? And that is a semicolon right there. It's not a Greek question mark. It's a semicolon. All 
All right, we got a uh, got a variety of different answers. Only one way to find out. <laughs> Note: misleading indentation. Yeah, I know. It's deliberate. It runs one time. So the reason why it run, runs one time is because this for loop runs whatever the next code block is, remember? So the for loop is going to run the next code block five times. What is the command? Nothing. It's an empty command. You can actually give an empty command. That's fine. This is perfectly valid C++. <laughs> Here you go. This is perfectly valid C++, except for not the YYs on it. Perfectly valid C++. Okay, so what this code is saying is five times do nothing. Then print hello world. And white space doesn't matter, remember? So if you, if you have the semicolon up here, it's still five times do nothing. Congratulations. And I had this thing indented over like this to make it look like it was part of the for loop. And if there are Python programmers out there, they're probably like, oh yeah, it's gonna run five times. Um, nope, in, uh, in C++ indentation does not matter. You are more than welcome, according to the language, to write your code like this, where everything is just flat up against the left edge of the screen. Yeah. By the way, if you write code like this, uh, you will make me cry, so don't do it. <laughs> Unless you wanna make me cry, bully. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is this is the proper way of doing it. Again, uh, most professors are going to recommend that you do that because that stops such problems. Just always, always use semicolons when you're a beginner, or semi semicolons. <laughs> always use curly braces when you are a beginner, and then uh, you know make these problems less likely to happen. See an ugly code, see out Kearney's tears. <laughs> okay, uh, I think that's about it for for loops. Uh, let's have, let's, we're gonna go ahead and pause and do just five minutes of lab time right now. I want everybody to write code that will print hello world or something um, a certain number of times, okay? I want you all to write at least one for loop and maybe more. Okay, so I'm gonna pause it now and have lab time until 12.35, okay? So write some sort of for loop. Begin. Resume uh, the recording here. So uh, whenever you do homework, the um, homework should always be done. Uh, the homework should always be done in the folder that gets pushed out to you. That's, that's one of the benefits of doing it on the server is that I can give you all homework in your own directories. If there's a typo or something, I can update it and send it out to you. Um, a lot of a lot of schools will just have a zip file you download and you have to unpack it, run on your own machine, and then mail it to the uh, auto grader. If they have an auto grader, you just mail it to the TA to grade. Um, when it's on a server like this, I can actually update your files and collect them. And I can jump in and look at what you're working on without uh, too much hassle. So it should be this file right here. So inside of triangle testing, there is a file called main.cc. That's the one that is official. Anything else gets ignored. So in the previous homework assignment, uh, somebody had a um, source code file called uh, simplecalculator.cc. And so, um, you know, it, it, it's not like I'm going to give you a zero, you know, if, like if you were to, you know, have it in a different named thing, like, like, I'm a nice guy, I'm gonna work with you. It's just kind of a hassle for you and a hassle for me to deal with it. Like you go on Canvas, it's like zero, <gasps> no. And then you mail me and I'm like, bro, where's your main.cc? You're like, oh, it's over here. And eh, you know, it's just, it's a waste of everyone's time. So the, uh, not saying that you would do this, it's just, you know, as just kind of a general general point that uh, that's that's the spot where your official code goes. What's, what's in that file is what gets created. If you have files elsewhere, they don't matter for anything. So if you want to practice, you know, if you do things in lab time .cc or whatever, main.cc up in your root directory or your, your home directory, that doesn't get graded. Only this file right here, main.cc inside of triangle testing, that gets graded. Okay. And, uh, and so for triangle tester, um, 
there's there's a couple points I should make about it. One of which is um, one of the test cases pushes up against the limit of precision. There is a precision limit uh, in floats, right? It's like six or seven ish, you know, ballpark figure significant digits, and one of them bounces up against that that edge. And so, depending on how you do your code, you'll maybe exceed the threshold of the precision and it'll fail the test case. And so there's a lot of different ways you can handle that. Um, if you're careful with how you do your algebra, you can do the algebra without exceeding the um, error threshold. Uh, another way, an, a very simple way is just to change these values to doubles. <laughs> yeah, that that works. Um, don't tell your professor, but um, it, it would actually work just fine if you just made everything doubles because then you get more precision and everything would work fine. Uh, the triangle assignment is due on Monday, I believe. So uh, it's not a hard assignment. It The biggest challenge is going to be just handling all the different ways triangles can be given to you, right? Because I can give you a 3, 4, 5 triangle, but I could also give you a 5, 4, 3 triangle, right? or I can give you a negative three, negative four, negative five triangle, right? And so somebody asked me yesterday, like, do you have to vet the input? Um, as far as like, you know, the, the person typing in squirrel or whatever, no, don't, don't touch main other than delete, deleting this. And deleting that is just, um, I put that in there just to make sure that students who do nothing on the entire homework assignment get a zero. Right, so if you want to, if you want to get at least one point for free on the assignment, DD, delete that line, and you will get at least one point or something like that. Right, you'll you'll pass all the test cases related to other or something, you know. So, uh, yeah, and so the vetting you have to do is really more along the lines of uh, don't don't worry about vetting the input. That's on me. I didn't check it. It's my fault. Don't touch main. Other than, other than deleting return zero. But there's lots of betting you still have to do because does it make sense for the length of a side to be negative? Does it make sense for a length of a side of a triangle to be zero? You know what I'm saying? So uh, how do you run the test or input test? Yeah. And that's something that um, a few people um, should have done on the, uh, the simple calculator, right? Like, input tester is your friend. It, it tells you at every point in time what score you're getting on the homework assignment. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah. So, the, the, the thing you have to handle is, like, how many different ways can, can somebody pass in a bad triangle? You know what I'm saying? Like, a negative 3, negative 4, negative 5 triangle. It's not a right triangle. That's an error. You know what I'm saying? So, there is still plenty of betting to be done on this assignment. Um... And there's lots of different ways that the data can come in. And so you just have to kind of be clever and think about it. Okay. And uh, this will this will teach you more about branches and, you know, error handling and thinking about the ways things can go wrong. There's 20 test cases. Each test case is worth half a point. So it's a 10 point assignment. Um, there's 20 test cases because there's a lot of different ways you can you can break people's code. You used to have 10, and I just kept finding bugs in students' code that wasn't handled, so I would add a test case for it. You mean learning how to write the ultimate triangle AI? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's continue on with loops, I guess. Did anyone, anyone have any questions about the for loop thing? Were you all able to, uh, were you able to write a loop successfully using your, your loop writing powers? You don't have trouble doing a for loop. How can I make it go rogue? <laughs> Actually, that's yeah. That's that's second semester computer science. Writing a rogue AI. Alright. Um able so we'll to do that. Okay. Um yeah. And if we if we put in a negative number here, it runs no times. Because the way that this works, uh, the way that this works, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like somebody wrote int i equals zero. 
that are positive again. So this code is actually the same as what I had before, more or less, except it's leaking, it's leaking the variable. So if I run that, we get five hello world. You guys all see that? So I made a variable named i equal to zero. And then you don't have to have anything before the semicolon if you don't want to. So I, I didn't put anything in there. And so the way that this code works is that uh, it starts off by initializing a variable, usually, here above it. And then it checks to see if this conditional is true. This is like an if statement. It's like saying if i is less than 5, continue. Otherwise, skip over to the bottom here and be like done or whatever. Right? So if we uh, if i was initialized to be 100, then uh, it would just skip over and print done. So it starts off initializing a new variable named i. It, usually it's zero, but here I made it 100. Then it checks to see it's kind of like an if statement, like if i is less than five, you know, that kind of thing. You can't, you can't put if there, by the way. Uh, but it's like saying if i is less than five, do the loop. Otherwise, skip over the rest. So it's like an if statement. Right there. And then the last person, the last bit of it is like I had put it here. So at the very bottom of the loop, it runs i++. So i was 0 before. Uh, like if we if we trace the flow of execution here, i starts off at 0. Is i less than 5? Yes. Print hello world. We then increase i to be 1. Come up to the top. Is i less than 5? 1 is less than 5. Yes. Run the loop. Print hello world. i is now 2. Comes up to the top of the loop. Is 2 less than 5? Yes. Print hello world, i is now 3, is 3 less than 5? Yes. Print hello world, i is now 4, is 4 less than 5? Yes. Print hello world, i is now 5. Is 5 less than 5? No. It skips down here and does done. So it prints hello world 5 times, followed by done. And that's, that's what a for loop means. It's actually three different things in one. The first part here is called the initializer, and then this part here is the conditional, and then this one here is the loop iterator. I don't know, there's different terminology for these things, but this is basically the same thing as for and i equals zero, i is less than five, i plus plus. Right? This for loop is the same as what we have here. It just looks ten times uglier. That's why we do for loops. It puts everything into one place. What about i minus minus? Um, well, First time through the loop, i is 0. Is 0 less than 5? Yes. Print hello world. At the bottom of the loop, i minus minus, it's now negative 1. Is negative 1 less than 5? Yes. Print hello world. i minus minus, it's now negative 2. Is negative 2 less than 5? Yes. Print hello world, it's now negative 3. Is negative 3 less than 5? Yes. It will keep running uh, for about 2 billion times. Once it hits uh, about 2 billion times, it underflows, it wraps around to the top and then ceases to be less than five and the loop will terminate and print done. So this is gonna run for approximately 2.1 billion loops. Okay. If you were to compile this, main.cc, uh, the uh, easy peasy program checker will actually detect that you've written an infinite loop here. And it's like, mm -mm. did you make sure you're iterating in the right direction? Don't do that. And if you're comfortable with that, you can override the bug, but most of the time you're going to want to hit Q to quit and uh, fix it. So this should be an I++ instead of an I-. minus minus. We compile it anyway. Uh, infinite loop, essentially. 2.1 billion times an infinite loop. Not quite infinite. Integers can't go lower than negative 2.1 billion. Okay. I ran it. That's it. It's a lot of hello worlds. Control-C gets you out of an infinite loop. And when we tried compiling it, we got a, a warning. A, again, don't don't ignore warnings. They're, they're there for a reason. Okay, so... If we started this at 4, 4 is less than 5, prints hello world, I++, plus plus, it's now 5, 5 is not less than 5, so this is going to run one time. It's 
going to run the loop one time. Hello world, done. Yeah. And this is what I mean, like, when you when you look at Zybooks and other people online, they're going to say all sorts of different ways of doing for loops. This is just printing hello world with extra steps. How many times does this thing run? It runs once. First time through the loop, i is 499. 499 is less than 500, it prints hello world. And then it increments i to be 500. 500 is not less than 500, so it quits. So this is a very complicated way of saying hello world. I do show really horrible code sometimes. Don't do this. I, I don't want to see, I don't want to see any of you writing code this way. If you need the loop to run one time, that's how you do it. And if that looks stupid, it's because it is. <laughs> you don't you don't need to have a loop run one time. Kind of de kind of defeats the point of a loop. So. Uh, plus x plus 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 x. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Got me hired, man. Got me hired. So, okay. Um, any questions about this? Do you guys get the reference? It's just hello world with extra steps. I hope you do. Why does it feel like my chat is not updating? Hmm. So, yeah, it's a Rick and Morty reference. Okay. Okay. So, that's a for loop. Any questions about it before we move on to while loops? Basically, you stick to this code pattern. Uh, if you want to, you know, do something like this and X. times to print hello world 10 so if you want the number here can be a variable and then you can uh, enter 5 or 10 or 15 whatever and it will print hello world that many times okay so anything besides for loops that was mentioned today we're going to do while loops in a second um You guys understand this? Like you can use a variable for it. If you're gonna do a string, um, if you wanna loop over a string like what we had before. Then you can use s.size or s.length. If you get a signed, unsigned comparison warning, um, ignore it. Uh, I'll, I'll explain how to fix that in a future le lecture. It's not going to break anything right now. So if you run it, Omae wa moshinderu. Okay. So I'd like for you to do this code for your next five minute gate, <laughs> your next five minute lab. I'd like for you to slowly print uh, a word, sentence, one at a time. This time, the number of times this loop is going to execute is based on the size of the string. And then you can pull individual letters out using s.app. And then useleep requires that to be included. 
And so I I'd like for you to just type this. You can put in whatever phrase you want there. And uh, I'll give you guys a few minutes to do that. And if you want to be super cool, like add, a, add an emoji or something or vertically print it. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, take this code uh, and change it so it prints vertically. Okay, what does that mean? Well, I'll hide it so I don't show you. Like this. You guys got it? Highly advanced coding right here. All right. Uh, Okay, and you can put in whatever phrase you want. I want you to take this code and change it so it prints vertically. And if you do that, if you figure that out pretty quickly, then add in emoji, have it print a smiley face emoji between each letter from Fist of the North Star. Okay, so, nani? <laughs> Why do you use you sleep instead of sleep? You sleep is micro sleep, it sleeps in microseconds. Sleeps, sleeps in seconds. So, if you wanna sleep for a tenth of a second, you gotta use micro sleep. If you sleep, you get a second. So, yeah, I usually use you sleep for that reason. It gives you more fine-grained control over it. All right, so I will give you guys five minutes to typewriter print something. Wake up, Neo. Okay, you guys understand? If you need any help, post on the uh, chat channel. Pause now. Yeah, so uh, I'll start recording just for a brief second. I'll give you guys a few more minutes to work on it. Um, uh, these these emojis are actually multi characters, and so um, if you do like a new line after every character, then it breaks up the emoji, and you just get garbage on the screen. So if you want to put an emoji, like if you want to blow a kiss during a Maiwa Mo Shinderu, uh, like that, then do it horizontally instead of, instead of vertically. Okay. And you can do that with Windows key. Period. Okay, I'll pause it again. For I'll give you guys another few minutes. Recording again. For those of you that are annoyed by Control Z backgrounding your stuff, uh, that's core Unix functionality. Control Z backgrounds, FG foregrounds. Uh, but if you keep doing it over and over again by, by mistake and you want it to just do undo like you're probably used to, then uh, I just posted onto the Discord two lines that you can put into your .vimrc file. It's from your, uh, it's in your home directory. So vim tilde slash dot vimrc and then you can you can put these two lines in here and that will um, enable undoing with control z instead of having a background so if you feel like you just can't get over control z meaning undo put that into your vimrc file and uh, and there you go so there's some there's some unique Unix magic to start your day. It's like a good cup of coffee. Cannot figure out how to print the vertical. How does how's it I do it? Okay. Like that. So after every letter, you do a new line. And that will print Omaiwa Mo Shinderu vertical printed. So, thank you. If you do that, then there we go. Looks kind of like uh, the Matrix, right? Uh, you can't seem to get it. Uh, Niles, don't, don't worry about it. It's fine. You're all good. Uh, Now we, we can have it in green to make it look like the matrix. That's cool. <laughs> uh, whatever reason, when I use you sleep 100,000, it has an issue. Did you include the Unix standard library, Mitchell? 
So you sleep is not part of the C++ standard library. So you have to, you have to include this one. So basically the core light, the core language for C++ is actually really small. There's really not too much to it. There's branches and loops and functions and classes and variables and algebra. There's not even input and output. There's very little th things you can actually do in core C++. And it's that way for a reason, because core C++ has to run on the smallest, tiny microcomputer and the world's biggest supercomputer. So the core language itself has to be supported on every platform. And so what they vastly prefer to do is put anything interesting into libraries. And so a library is a collection of code that uh, does useful stuff. In this case, Unix standard library has things like usleep, which allows you to pause the program for a little bit of time. IO stream, very useful stuff, it has CN and Cout in it. Uh, inline also is in the IO stream library. Uh, public colors.h, you might notice that it is uh, with double quotes rather than angle brackets. The double quotes mean that I made it. It is not part of the system installed libraries. It is something I have, I wrote it. And that's why I use double quotes instead of angle brackets. And so I just provide a path name to where my header is. It's in slash public slash colors.h. And then that enables this and this to exist. So that turns the font color green and that sets the font color back to white. Is there a rainbow color or multicolor? Um, not per se, but if you pipe the output of this, like rather than doing this and this, and now we don't need colors anymore. Rather than doing that, you can pipe the result of that through lolcat and lolcat will colorize it for you. Got rainbow colors. Oops. So a little cat will do the rainbow coloring for you. Uh, you could do it with my library. It just it would take more work than is worthwhile for right now. Pretty Half Life Three is coming soon. Don't worry. <laughs> Did you write that in two thousand and one or? <laughs> okay, so that is for loops. Um, yeah, the the most common for loop you're probably gonna write is actually this one here where you're like looping over a string that that or just a flat number of things that's um, that's your ticket that's your ticket to success right there okay so we're now going to do while loops let me pull up the presentation again oh let's let's do some quiz questions real fast okay what does this code do how many times does hello world get printed here i guess that Half-Life 3 jokes are almost as old as me. Isn't that depressing? Yeah, a friend of mine visited um, Valve Software about five or six years ago, and she said there's nobody's working on it. So it's not like it's been under development this whole time. They make too much money off Steam to worry about writing video games. Five, yes. Uh, sorry, I saw the answer five. Yeah, there you go. So it, it, this is going to print Hello World five times. That's the ticket right there. Okay. So... What does this code do? In plain English, what is this code? What is this code doing? What is it going to print to the screen? Crente gets the reference. So uh, back in uh, the olden days, there was this rapper named Eminem. <clears throat> it's pretty popular. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. <laughs> He's like 90 years old now or something. I don't know. So uh, yeah, it's going to say, hi, my name is, what my name is, who my name is. Hi, my name is, what my name is, who my name is. Hi, my name is, what my name is, who my name is. Chicka Chicka Slim Shady. That's what it's going to do. Okay. So... Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, that's the guy. That's the guy right there. I don't know if he's done anything recently. Okay, so uh, what is this code going to do? Take a moment, look at it. Put on the Jeopardy theme music. What is this code doing? Good, I'm liking the answers. So if the user types in 10, the loop is going to run 10 times. It is going to print the numbers from 0 to 9. If you typed in 10. If you typed in 5, it'll print 0 to 4. What will it output if a negative number is entered? What would happen? If it's less than 0, it won't print anything. Okay, Margaret's got that one. Yep, that's what it'll do. If you type in negative 5, we'll just skip over the whole thing. Because remember, that middle part there is like an if statement. So the... Um, this part here, it's like an if statement, and so if uh, they typed a negative 5, 0 is not less than negative 5, it skips over the block and keeps going. Yep. So, let me get rid of those bullet points, they're a little distracting to me. Okay. So, while loops. Okay. So, while loops are used when you don't know, or Again, you can sort of make a while loop work like a for loop and vice versa. There's, it's not like a, this isn't something that's in the language. It's my own personal philosophy when it comes to writing loops. Okay. And so I use while loops when I don't know how long something is going to run for. Why, why loops? <laughs> why loops? Why? Why? It's something that four year olds do. Why? That's a why. That's a why loop. <laughs> why loop? Why? Because I love you. That's how my mom would always end those. Why are we going to the store to get food? Why, we, why do we need food? So you can, so you can eat. Why do I need to eat? Because, because I love you. <laughs> okay, so the syntax for a while loop, while loop, not a while loop, uh, is is the following. You type while, that's a reserved keyword in the C++ language, while, and then open parentheses, and then inside of it, you're going to put something that looks like an if statement, the, the expression, the Boolean expression like you have inside of an if statement. So you can say like while x is less than 5, or while cn is true, or something like that. Um, a lot of the time, I just write while true. And that means infinite loop. So while true is an infinite loop. So you might be like, well, that's a problem. Like, I want my program to quit at some point, right? So... Um, the good news is, uh, if you do a return zero or something like that, it'll quit. Right. So you can get out of it. Uh, let me let me just write a uh, while true loop for you on here, so you can see it. While true, see out. Yes. Okay. So the. Um, the code here is going to print a my wa mo and an infinite loop. And I will, of course, rainbow print that for <laughs> So, it's a schnazzy. Infinite, uh, you are already dead. And rainbow patterns, just like the Fist of the North Star would approve of. An anime well known for its cheerful colors and optimistic outlook on life. Okay, so do you, do you understand? So while true, every time through the loop it evaluates, is that true? Yep, true, still true. Prints out a, prints out a Maiwa Moshin Deiru again. Comes over to the top. Is true still true? Yep, it still is true. And it, it will never terminate. It's an infinite loop. So make sure you know Control C. Control C. Control C is high C. Control C. To cancel a program. If you're going to be doing infinite loops, make sure you're hot on that finger for Control C, because it'll flood your it'll flood your network connection with your already deads. What if your control button doesn't work? Um, do you have another control button? I got two on my keyboard. Either of them should work. Uh, I guess another way you can do it is by uh, going up to Putty and. Uh, restarting the session or something, you know, like close buddy and put another one. 
worst case scenario that'll work. Um, yeah, but in general, when you write code, it shouldn't it shouldn't be an infinite loop. Okay, it's more like when you screw up, you get an infinite loop because because you can always do something like that. Like you could return from the program, right? Like if I said return zero. That will quit, so it prints the line once and then returns from the program. So this is just a hello world with more steps again. It, you know, except instead of hello world, you're trying to kill somebody. We're saying they're already dead, technically. Okay. Um, so that's one way out. Another way out is something new, something bright, something beautiful, something old, something new, something blue, is break. This is new. Pay attention, everyone. This is new. So a break command. It's see how it's yellow. That's not. Uh, that's not like a variable or anything like that. That is part of the core C plus plus language. And what break means? It means terminate whatever loop I am within right now. So if I wanted to, for example, read strings from the keyboard, um, CN into Phone a C out. Please enter your name. Um, let's this name. Give it a better name. S. Password. Please enter your password. So this is gonna, in an infinite loop, it's gonna ask the user for their name and their password over and over again. No way out currently, but if name is equal to bill and password is equal to hunter123, then break. And so this is an infinite loop. It'll run over and over and over again until the user types in bill as the name and hunter123 as a password. If you do that, it will say access. You're in the mainframe. Okay. So this is like what we had before, except now if you type in random stuff, it's just going to keep asking your name and password over and over again. Okay. Until I type in bill hunter123. Once I do that, it says access granted. Welcome to the mainframe. Uh, 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 no, this is, this is different from return zero. Return zero from main quits. It quits the entire program. Break ends the loop. So, uh, then it keeps running, right? So we were in an infinite loop here. And then when they type in their name and password correctly, it jumps down to here, prints access granted, welcome to the mainframe. And then presumably we've got more code down below that you know we're gonna use to I don't know, turn on the security system at Jurassic Park or something. Okay. Can you use these loops to vent to vet CN inputs? Yes. Um, and you can even use them to recover from squirrels being stuffed into your integers. Uh, it'll require a little more knowledge than what you have right now though to do that. So um, what we can do is say like uh, um, So if not CN, we don't know how to recover from that yet. So we will just uh, die at that point. But we can say if age is less than one or age is greater than 130, um, continue. Actually, we don't even need to say that. Um, let's flip it around because I haven't taught you continue yet. Yeah, 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 sure. Um, 
age is less than one or age is less than 130, continue, new keyword for today. So that's another new keyword. Learning points for today. Number one, four, anti equals zero, i is less than 100, i plus plus, see how i prints i 100 times. Bullet point two, while true, see how i thing actually prints high infinitely okay break cancels whatever loop you are in continues on with the program learning point four for today and the last learning point I promise continue it says jump back up to the top of the loop so if they typed in a bad age, then it will continue so that it jumps back up here and it's gonna say enter your age again. Otherwise it's gonna be all like see how age is age is acceptable. Break. And that will end the loop. Uh, see how I normally I normally don't typo quite that often, believe it or not. It's just because I'm I'm typing at a really weird angle here. Okay, so um, does this make sense to y'all? So let's run it, and then maybe that'll make a little more sense. Uh, let's run it. So if I type in an age of negative one hundred, please enter your age two hundred. Please enter your age three hundred, two hundred, forty two. Age is acceptable. Welcome to Wells Fargo. Fargo. Don't sue me. So infinite loop and this is how you can vet this is how you can vet input for sure yeah somebody types in their age and if it's uh if it's bad then you uh might maybe print bad you know you could you could do something like this and be like oh my like, uh, bad age must be between one and three. something like that and then continue what that does is it jumps you back up to this spot right here, and then it runs down again. So wherever you are, when you hit continue, it jumps up to the top of the loop and runs back down again. Break ends the loop. Wherever you are, when you get a break, it ends the loop and prints out Wells Fargo. Welcome to Wells Fargo next. Look at Kearney age shaming the immortals. Yeah, if you, oops, dang it. Um, have you seen the new uh, uh, trailer for the Marvel? Eternals. Nope. It's got a Korean actor in it. They use his English name instead of his uh, Korean name. It's a little weird. Yeah, this guy. This guy is a pretty cool, pretty cool actor from Korea. Not like what you'd call traditional movie star looks, but he's been in a lot of really cool movies. Uh, uh, Train to Busan, obviously, being the most famous of them. He plays both gangsters and cops. So yeah, so if, so if any of the Eternals show up, uh, I'll, I'll have to modify my code to do banking for them. You've seen Train to Pusan. Okay. okay, so... Yep, yeah, so these are the four learning points for today. I'd like for you to write a while loop program that will um, 
require the user to type uh, lab time. Lab time. Write a program that requires the user to type either squirrel or bunny. Okay. Uh, if not, prompt him again. Uh, and then after you do that, do an infinite loop uh, that will mm, print zero on the screen. And then the user can type up, down, left, right, or quit. If quit quits, otherwise prints the new location. For example, right, right, right would be x is equal to 3, y is equal to 0. Okay. So you don't know how many times they're going to type up, down, left, or right. We'll just keep typing up, up, right, right, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. BA selects shit. Konami code. No. Um, you are the top output. Yes. You're all top tier. <laughs> all right. So go ahead and do lab time now, and uh, we'll let this run for the rest of class. All right. So try, try doing this now when you got me and the TAs. Here you got Crente and Mincrelli. Mincrelli, of course, is the new TA. Um, and I think I saw Zach Mueller on here earlier. Yeah, he's still here. Zach Hazard's still on here. And uh, I guess that is it. Oh, Mr. Bell's on here too. So you can't really do that while your net's down. What should you do? Um, just try doing it in your head, I guess. Write it on a piece of paper. See if you can sketch out how you would you would do this code. So this is this is kind of like the basic the 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 basis for like an exploration adventure game, a text based adventure game. North north, you discovered a pickaxe. Do you wish to pick up the pickaxe? Yes, you know that kind of stuff. So uh, you heard your name. Uh, so Zach will be here to uh, help help people as well. Coding on paper. That's what I did at Buchanan. I taught at Buchanan for a year. And they gave me the only classroom in Buchanan, as far as I know, that didn't have an overhead projector and no computer. And I was like, and no laptops. And I was like, cool, we're teaching CSI 40 on a whiteboard. So I would draw a picture of a computer. You know, hello world. You know, this is what you'd see. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty rough. Daily quizzes were on paper. Yeah, but that was for a reason. That was so that you could trade papers with each other and grade each other's homework. Something like that. Uh, you will print three zero on the screen. Yeah. So as the as the user types, you hit right, return, right, return, right, return. It's gonna print one zero, two zero, three zero. So this is like it, it always prints your it always prints your uh, your current location, right? After every command. Do we gonna make an MS DOS game this year? You gonna make a Unix game, but yeah, text based? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can make a text-based adventure, for sure. Okay. So, I miss Clovis Community Bros. Yeah, it's it, yeah, I miss being in person, too. And we're currently trying to plot out what spring's going to look like. So, stay tuned on that. Um, it, I, I think right now it's going to be up to the individual professors if they're in person or online or, or whatever. And uh, for me personally, I listen to my wife on the matter. My wife was looking at that Delta Surge, and she was like, mm, I don't trust it. And she's a healthcare professional, so I, I pay attention to her. Um, the projector has such a bad resolution. He's zoomed to screen share. Yeah, we got a, we got a new projectors at our school, so fortunately we don't have that problem. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to sign off now. Uh, so please work on this, and uh, when you are done with it, screenshot it onto the CS40 channel, and you can peace out. Uh, otherwise, peace out at 2. One way or the other. You got 23 minutes. Try to at least get um, one done, right? So just keep, you know, 
keep re-prompting them to enter scroll or bunny until they finally type it in. Okay, so basically kind of what we're doing here, just in a loop, it's vetting, you know, so you have to pick one of the two. These are the two teams. There's Team Squirrel, there's Team Bunny. If the user types in football, you're like, no, 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 that's not one of the teams. You have to pick Squirrel or Bunny. You know, do you understand? So keep doing it until they type in one of Squirrel or Bunny. And then once they do, break out. Okay, and then uh, these are two separate programs, so they're not the same program. Or I guess you do it in the same. One or anything. Okay, that's it. I'm going to pause the recording or end the recording now. And uh, you got 22 minutes. Go for it. What file are you programming this in? Any, any file you want. So just make a new file on the server. Uh, nothing we do in lab time like this gets graded. So just make a new file. I would call it like, you know, week, whatever, day, whatever, dot .cc. Yeah. How do you move a line of code down or up? Uh, DD deletes a line. How do you send a screenshot? Uh, Windows key shift S like this and then you drag out um, you do a window snip it's usually the easiest and then you can just paste it onto discord and it'll it'll appear on there okay okay sounds good guys